Uh, good morning, everyone. I thought I'd try something a little different on a few videos, just see how it looks and feels, rather than walking around pointing at stuff. Somebody criticized me for pointing too much. Anyhow, I thought I'd just uh, kind of maybe put the camera in a still position and do some narrating. Don't know how this is going to work out, but we'll try it. As you can see, he went through last night before we left, cleaned this room out. I know the floor looks rough, but he did clean it. He scraped quite a while on it. But the plan is today to start tiling this room. They did get the bathrooms done. Duke came through yesterday, said that the uh, roofs are going to be delivered today. And today is Sunday. Next weekend is Sankran. He said that the roofs and the ceilings will be completed before Sankran. These guys are leaving on the 11th, so I'm assuming somewhere right in that area. By then, they'll have the roofs on these, the ceilings in. The painters left yesterday. They won't be back until after Sankran. And they didn't say that directly, but what they said tells me that's what's going to happen. So I think we'll probably just have the two guys here uh, tiling. Other than when the roof crew comes through to put the roof on, that'll take a day because they're just six meter panels. Just cut them the link, drop them in there, screw them down. I'll guarantee they can do this whole thing in just a couple hours. That probably even less. Um, guys that do it every day, they'll get, they'll get it up there really quick. I did talk to Duke about the rain gutter situation and the concern there. Um, he said we'll look at it and just evaluate it after the rainy season, during the rainy season, whatever. I did talk to him about a rain gutter up here, and I, wanna, I can't remember what your name was. Somebody I was chatting with said, hey, why don't you put a rain gutter up there? And I think I mentioned that in a video. Might not catch everything coming off that roof. But if I put as big a rain gutter as I can up there and just get rid of the stuff out the back, if I need to, after we evaluate it, at least it will keep a lot of the water off here. And if this has trouble keeping up, that will take most of the load off it because that's the big roof up there. But I thought that was a good idea. Um, he said rain gutters can get pretty expensive for the, the nice big ones here. I don't like throwing money away, but if that's what I got to do to keep the water out of here, then that's what I'll do. Or at least I'll try it anyhow. And then if that don't work, we'll punch the holes in the back. Um, I want to talk about the pump house a little bit. We had some questions about it. So on the pump house, as you can see, they skim coated most of this. And as I said, they're not going to be back until after Song Kron. They got a few little things left that they need to, to finish up like this skim coating here, but they'll come back in with that team. They'll knock this out while the other ones are painting. I had a question this morning, the dimensions of the pump house. This pump house is three meters wide. Originally, I was going to go two. Some pit kind of pushed me to go to three. I was reluctant because I wanted to keep that driveway open along the side, but we went to three. I'll be glad we did in the end, I think, because we really don't need to get along there with the back drive. But anyhow, it's three wide. And originally, see, this is a downside of having a position camera. It was going to start right here and go one, two columns back, flush. Hope you can see me over there. I think so. Which was going to be just over six meters long. And I was going to put the pump inside the pump house. But just in the end, for cost reasons, uh, trying to manage the budget on this build, I ended up shortening up the building, of course, to cheapen it up, right? And put it where, as you've seen before, I put the pump just outside this wall. I think Duke's going to pour a one meter apron around this anyhow, which will encase that pump in concrete. And if not, I'll see what he'll charge me to do it. Don't watch this part, Duke. As we talked before, this side piece here will be concrete no matter what. If we put the one meter apron around the outside, that will encase that uh, pump in concrete, which needs to be done. As I said before, if I'm out there working on it, I don't want to stand around a bunch of a bunch of mud and stuff. Question about the pump house was what kind of equipment we're putting in here. We've got the basics, right? You got the the water storage tank and the pressure pump, but the filtering system was really the one in question. Ty wants to do has got me down to. One carbon filter and a water softener. Personally, I think I need another particulate filter, but they, I went back and asked them again, are you sure that's enough? Yep, we're sure. No problem. 
So a few of you online have been uh, commenting about, you know, make sure you get plenty of filtering so you don't plug stuff up. My original plan was to pre-filter into the tank, come out of the tank with the carbon filter, softener, one more particulate filter, and then into the house. After the pressure pump, I was going to tee off and run my irrigation line out around to the back of the house for water and trees and stuff prior to the softener. Okay, with all that said, through my many visits to Tai Watsudu and talking to them, they have got me down to, let me just walk through this. It's going to come from the pump, go through a carbon filter into the uh, storage tank, pressure pump out of the storage tank to a water softener, and then right into the house. So I showed the, the bypass menagerie for the carbon filter I built the other day. The plan was to bring the well right through here, run the bypass carbon filter right here, set the tank over here by the door, and because the infeed and the outfeed of the tank are in the same location, I thought I could run the carbon filter over, drop down, go in a tank, and then come right out of the tank to the pressure pump in between them. And then 45 across here, because then I would be able to put a T right here to get my irrigation water out prior to putting the softener right here. And then the house water would go out because Duke is going to tie the house water in around the back of the house so he kind of needs it going that direction i think i'll put a particulate like maybe even a cartridge filter after the softener before we go out to the house i've been looking for uh, uh like a bag filter where you can pull the bag out and clean it whatever you need to and just put it back in there so i'm not buying cartridges the rest of my life because that's where those companies make money is selling your cartridges not on the damn filter housing We'll keep up to date on these guys tiling and when the roof shows up later today, we'll be sure to get that on video if we can. It's supposed to be hotter than hell today. Uh, I believe the forecast is 40 Celsius, which is about 104 Fahrenheit. That's hot. Okay, so once again, either a language barrier broke down, there was a change of plans, or more likely nobody really knows what the hell's ever going on. The pink crew has arrived. I was under the impression yesterday they weren't gonna be back until these were done. So they could just kind of finish everything at one time. So I'm not real sure what they're going to do. Um, these guys have got the entire living room occupied. There's really not much left to do in there other than where that uh, cheat rock was leaning against the wall. But they can work on the back side of this wall. All these columns, the facade all the way around. Um, there's a little bit left inside the pump house as we saw earlier. But these guys are starting to put the mortar bed down. So unlike Thai concrete, it's pretty dry mix. The string line, I think, will be the top of the tile. And they've got these, and I have seen these in the West before, but he was showing them to me earlier because I think he, they're probably something fairly new over here. But you basically set these under the tile. When you get a piece of tile here, a piece of tile here, then you slide this in here. And you push that through, and what it does is it just lifts the tile up so the tiles are at the same level on top. Two tile will be right here, and this will get the top of the tiles even. They'll take this out, they'll just break these off and leave this leave this base piece under the tile. Use a lot of mortar doing it this way. But I think every tie video I've seen where they tile floors, which everybody tiles floors here, but every one of them have this massive mortar <laughs> bed on there. But hey, it's their game, we'll watch them play. They did uh, find the center of the room and put the laser level in. I'll drop a picture in right here string that lined the whole thing so it's center and we'll have even pieces of tile on both sides of the road. The thing is, is this tile is going to carry from here right on into the bedroom and down the hallway so those may not necessarily be centered just because of where they fall. All right, it's official, first piece of tile. These tiles are 60 by 60 centimeter which is 24 by 24 inches if anybody's wondering. And he did tap it down to the top of the tiles flush with the string. The other thing I should mention about those wedges, they also set the gap between the tiles.
okay, my microphone's blinking red, which means the battery's almost dead, so we're gonna have to stop this video. I'm gonna go put this on the charger. We'll catch up with these guys in a little while. Okay, I was out here and recorded a video just 10 minutes ago. It's freaking hot in this sun. But anyhow, I made the whole video and then discovered I don't have a microphone on. I left my microphone laying over there. So what I did is I came over here. I wanted to show you this dark strip at the top. They started painting it earlier, but they started painting it the light gray. Sompit and I were over in the salon. She noticed that they were painting it light. We ran over and said, no, stop, stop, stop. That's supposed to be dark. Um, just one more example of why it's important that you be here and just kind of keep an eye on them. Saved a bunch of money, saved a bunch of time. Just stop and do it right right now. They did. The other thing I want to make note of, we've all heard about how they can't match paint in Thailand. So, as you know, when we painted this fence, we went to Duke, we got the paint numbers for this house, TOA brand. We went to the retailer, distributor, whatever you want to call them, where he was going to get the, this paint here for this house. So what I did is when they started with the light gray this morning, I grabbed a little sample on my finger, went out and put it on the wall. And then I grabbed a little sample of the dark a little bit ago, put it out there on the dark gray. We're going to go out and take a look at it right now. So let's go over there now. I don't know if you can see the samples from there, but I put just a dab on my finger, come out here earlier, put it on here. Let me show you. Light gray, dark gray. As you can see, they do not match. I was aware that this was probably going to be a problem. So when I bought the paint for the fence, I actually bought extra paint for both colors. And when we finished, I put on the bucket fence. So I know that's the spare paint for the fence colors. I asked Duke, when you buy the paint for the house, get me one extra nine liter slash two and a half gallon pail of each of those colors to keep afterwards so that I will have spare paint for later on if we need to do any repairs or touch up. And I've had really good luck in the States matching colors, but I always did that in the US anyhow. I always bought a little extra and kept a little extra. When I sold my house in South Carolina to move here, I still had paint left from eight years earlier when I painted it. It's up to you, don't do it if you don't want to, just take whatever they have left. But he said I could keep whatever he has left, but I, like I said, I told him to get me an extra nine liter pail of every color. So I was sure I had plenty for years to come. As you can see, it's been a pretty slow go. Um, they've been at this for, I think, four hours now. I thought it'd go much quicker. But some of it's just the process they're using. As you can see, he's standing there waiting for uh, mortar right now. Where if they were kind of thinking ahead and planning ahead, they would have that ready. And I really thought they'd get this room by the end of today, but I don't think so now. They might get this half, and that's it. Big tile like that by myself, I guarantee you I could get that room in one day as I've done a room that size by myself with small tile. This young lady's been in here putting the grout in all day. Looks nice, that white grout and that dark tile. Looks like all she's got left is this corner right here. I have laid many, many, many square feet of tile in my life. Too many. And in this room, I think we've been looking at this in the dark mostly, but it'll give you a better idea of you know, what it's gonna look like. Again, it'll have this darker colored strip around the center here and then the white grout should look pretty good. I can tell you right now, I don't know if you can tell the camera's wobbling, but there's a nice breeze coming through that window behind the camera right now. Feels really nice. It's flipping hot outside and it's going to get worse. It's uh, coming up on 2 o'clock and usually the hottest peak is about 3 o'clock. So I want to get back over there to slog, get my shirt off and get relaxed. All right, it's 103 in paradise and that's not the time, it is the temperature. And as you can see, my roof has arrived. As promised, insulated panels. These should be the top ones. They're probably the six meter longs for the parking roof. And those bottom ones are going to be the shorter ones for, no, that ain't enough for both of them, is it? Well, those are definitely shorter. So the bottom ones are probably for the pump house, I'm guessing. Let's walk over and take a look at the color on them. The edge flashing. Somebody cop? YouTube. I guess I didn't realize they were gray. I thought they were silver, but that's all right. All right. Gaussip. Gaussip. Bad. 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 B
So if there's 30 of them, 86, uh, 3, 8, 2, 40, uh, 6 on the 30 is going to be 180. So 250, 250, it's going to be 25 and a half meters, which is going to be both buildings. Not sure why they put a pattern like that on the back of it. It's kind of cool. All right, while they're unloading that, let's go take a look at what they got done inside. It's going to be a pretty slow grow. I figured they'd get this room done today pretty easy. Painters are leaving. So it's coming up on 4 o'clock right now, so you might get a few more pieces down, but you're going to get a lot more done. Take a look at this bathroom. As you can see, she finished crowding it. It looks pretty good. I like this contrasting color in the grout. As you can see, they got most of this done. They did slop some paint around. They're going to have to come back and touch it up. And I see a little spot under that window down there they missed. And then some gray they got on the white there. But they still got to do this. And they will paint this bottom piece the same as the top. But I imagine they'll wait until after they put the concrete apron around it. Some pit went to town earlier. I gave her some money to buy everybody sponsors. And this is the second sponsor bottle I see laying around here. So, so I won't make that mistake again. Paint crew, no more sponsors. I've seen one laying over on the other side too. People can't take care of their shit. I ain't going to buy it for them. Here's the young man playing video games. And she looks like she's getting started in here. I was commenting why they didn't skim coat the rest of this today. And they started painting, but they've only got four bags of that skim coat left, so I'm sure they're waiting for some more to get here, and then they'll start mixing and skimming again. I do not know whether they'll be back tomorrow or not. All this 40 by 40 tile that looks like our 60 by 60 was delivered by accident, so I don't know what Duke's going to do with it. It won't stay here, though. I know that. So this whole pile here is out of here. Some pit's kitchen tile has not showed up. As I said at the beginning of the day, I never know what's really going on. That's why I don't know if the painters will be back tomorrow or next year or next month. So with that said, I don't know if these guys will come back and put this roof on or if they're just the delivery guys. My guess they're just delivery guys. So it needs to be cleaned up a little more, I think. But you can see what it's going to look like in the end. There's a bunch of powder in there. So maybe once we clean the powder up, we get the dried paint off there. I'll make sure they go through and clean those up because those need to look nice and straight. This booger here don't look good. And that's just, they painted the powder and the powder dried hard. But it's a nice feature. Lots of touch-up paint to do. But that's fine, as you can see. I don't even know if this is paint or primer. I think this is just primer right here. And I know I mentioned this a couple videos back. I did talk to Duke last night when he was here about pulling that block out of there instead of roofing or putting a ceiling around it. Because that's just mimicking the trim around the other sides. He said, yeah, no problem. Because to me, it looked weird just having that little block sticking down out of the ceiling. So we're going to knock that out or smooth it out before they put the ceiling in. And as I said before, as soon as that roof goes up, then they can come back and put the ceiling in. In the next couple of days, they'll be in here to get that up. And then shortly behind that, they will get the, in here to get the ceilings up. Because as I also mentioned, Duke said that these would be done by next weekend. The ceilings and the roofs. With that, I'm going to go pack up my stuff, head home for a little bit, and then go see Eddie have a couple beers.